Can UFOs actually achieve the immense speeds required for interstellar travel? One potential answer may be buried 30 feet beneath the ground in America's heartland. The Fermilab Tevatron Collider, outside Chicago, Illinois. Racing just below the speed of light, particles of protons and antiprotons are launched in opposing directions. They meet in a high-energy collision. The impact produces gamma rays, the highest energy source known in the universe, and potentially the key to interstellar travel. The best way of making antimatter here on Earth is to employ probably the most famous equation that Einstein taught us, which is equals mc squared, which tells us that for a certain amount of matter, we can get energy. It's a great idea because it's incredibly efficient. You essentially take all of the mass in those particles and convert it into energy. But how can antimatter exist in the universe if it must be artificially manufactured? That's the question that Stefan H. from Philadelphia texted the universe. Stefan, antimatter definitely exists, and when it meets up with normal matter, it explodes in a burst of electromagnetic radiation. Now, we can make small bits of antimatter in laboratories, but we can also collect antimatter from space. Some cosmic rays, which are charged, very energetic particles coming from space, actually consist of antimatter. Currently, the super collider is the only practical way to produce antimatter. And right now, it's created in very small quantities. If we could figure out a way to both create and store enough antimatter, we would have a storable fuel, which when mixed with ordinary matter, would liberate a huge amount of energy at a rate way beyond what either fission or fusion can do. Because we know antimatter exists and we know antimatter can be created and stored, it is conceivable that an advanced civilization could create and harness the power of antimatter in sufficient quantities to create an antimatter rocket. An antimatter ship could achieve unbelievable velocities, cruising just below light speed, nearly matching the speed of a star beam streaking across the galaxy. Travel time from Earth to Alpha Centauri, four and a half light years distant, about five years. In human terms, the cost of creating enough antimatter particles to power such a starship would be astronomical. It might be affordable in alien currency, but an antimatter spacecraft like this comes at a high price. The gamma rays from antimatter propulsion are so dangerous, they could destroy the cell structure of any living beings aboard ship. This starship would have to include an advanced shielding mechanism to keep the crew alive. And at such high rates of speed, there are equally destructive threats in the universe. Space is pretty empty, but if you were moving close to the speed of light, you'd need an extremely effective shielding system that would allow you to be protected from interstellar dust particles that would all but annihilate a spacecraft traveling that fast. But if space debris is so dangerous, why not avoid it completely? The solution might be one familiar to Star Trek fans, namely a starship that could achieve light speed without even moving. In effect, one would create what is called a warp bubble, the name taken straight out of science fiction, and that would involve compressing a region of space-time in front of a spacecraft and expanding a region of space-time behind a spacecraft while the spacecraft itself sat stationary inside this flat bubble. So one would effectively be riding a wave of space-time. A warp drive may seem like pure sci-fi fantasy, but in 1994, a well-respected young physicist named Miguel Elcubierre published a serious proposal outlining how to travel in a controllable space warp.
there are huge obstacles to El Cupieri's warp drive solution. The biggest is called dark energy. A cosmic phenomenon recognized in 2011 when three scientists were awarded the Nobel Prize for proving its existence. The simplest explanation that's been proposed for the phenomenon of dark energy is that there's an intrinsic property of space itself that makes it want to expand. You can actually see it by looking at uh, receding parts of the universe and seeing that there's this extra acceleration component. But it isn't a stored energy source like solar energy or other kinds of energy. And so it's not inconceivable, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that some advanced civilization existing somewhere in the universe has learned how to harness dark energy to create an exotic form of propulsion. But there's another obstacle to a workable warp drive. The only known way to pull a spacecraft forward within a warp requires harnessing the intense energy of a black hole. The sort of simple notion is somehow to make a very concentrated bit of matter, extremely concentrated on the level which would cause a black hole. If you could generate a black hole on a small scale, so to speak, you could dangle it in front of the ship and use its space distortion to sort of drag the ship along. And exactly how fast could a warp drive tow an extraterrestrial spacecraft? The clear implication of El Cubieri's work was that it should be possible, if you can make his design of a warp drive, to achieve speeds almost any multiple of the speed of light. Travel time from Earth to Alpha Centauri aboard a light speed craft powered by a space warp? About four and a half years, or less, as long as everyone on board doesn't incinerate. One problem with the Alcubierre drive is within that warp bubble, temperatures would rise to far hotter than the core of our sun. That's hot. Just one more small problem to solve for the chance to reach planet Earth. But what if such an alien spacecraft were to arrive in Earth's atmosphere, riding in a warp bubble towed by a black hole? It might not be the first mass witness UFO sighting, but it would certainly be the last.